it's fine. I'll just move this over. Can it go? You good? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, thank you. Are we ready? Check. Right. So we are recording. Yeah, okay. ready. Uh, so a talk on cluster performance where we are an overview. My name is Manoj. I work for the Red Hat performance and scale engineering team. And the scale engineering part actually came in recently and uh, cluster has not seen much time so far on the in the scale lab. Uh, so we typically do tests on six to eight four to eight uh, bare metal servers with a matching number of clients if possible. Um, so what I'm planning to cover here is, you know, a motivation for uh, the, the talk itself. Uh, look at cluster performance for some of the broad workload classes, large file sequential I.O., random I.O., small file performance. Uh, I want to take a minute talking about uh, erasure coding because that's something we see a lot, lot of interest in. Uh, and talk about some of the um, issues that you know we are trying to address and just to uh, make it clear there is a lot of performance work going on uh, yesterday we talk about, talked about performance testing that Sham is going to cover and there is downstream uh, uh, QE performance regression test that go, go on what I'm covering here is mostly stuff that um, I'm involved with so um, the goal here is to basically look at these broad workload classes and get a general sense of where we are with cluster, um, what are the impact of the different workload parameters, and if possible in the process look at some of the areas for <coughs> improvement. And, Jeff, or, and for these, the graphs that follow, um, <coughs> each server uh, here has 12 drives. Um, for the replica 2 results, um, we put all those 12 drives into a single RAID 6 device. Um, whereas for the EC results, we have each drive acting as a brick, and so in this particular configuration for EC, that gives us a 12 cross 4 plus 2 uh, configuration. And on the client side, we have uh, up to four clients depending on the test, <coughs> and these servers and clients are interconnected with a uh, single 10 gigabit Ethernet link, and uh, this was just done using Theodore 8 or 2. And for unless stated otherwise, we are turning lookup optimize on, uh, performance.client IO threads on, um, on the volume, and client and server event threads are set to four. So this is pretty much in the test that we do, the performance test that we do. These are sort of become standard uh, tunable parameters, tunable settings. Okay, so <coughs> hopefully this is visible at the back. Uh, so the, the chart here the, is um, it's a distributed I/O zone running on four clients, writing to a two cross two uh, volume on four servers. Um, so we have two sets of tests here. One is I/O zone with four threads aggregate, which is one thread per client, right? And the other is with forty eight threads aggregate, so that's twelve threads per client, and. <coughs> Uh, two different IO zone record sizes, um, 64 kilobytes and one megabyte. And mostly what I'm trying to show here is when you talk about the performance, it depends a lot on some of the workload parameters. Right? So for instance, when you have uh, only uh, four threads, right? so you're not pumping enough IOs into the volume to saturate any of the, the network or the, or the disks. So the numbers that you get are primarily dictated by uh, the latency. right? So each thread can go only so fast and then you aggregate that and uh, that's Little's law by the way uh, whereas when you go for go to these uh, larger number of threads even if an, a single thread might experience latency on IOs there are so many IOs coming in in the aggregate that you can pump in enough uh, IO to saturate your network or, or the disk and in this case you see that um, if you look at the yellow and the green bars uh, on the sequential write part, so this is a replica, replica two volume, right? So uh, with four clients, the maximum you can get with a 10 gig, 10 uh, single 10 gigabit Ethernet link is about something upwards of four uh, gigabytes, and you know, so so that's what you see. That that times two is basically you see network saturation there. And on the read side again, you get close to what 
um, the network can give you that. And and that's that's not always been the case. Um, in the past, we have had you know fuse thread bottlenecks. We have had single threaded e pole uh, throttling. Many of those kinds of issues that would have prevented you from you know getting this kind of a good performance result. Right? Um, where you are able to saturate the network or you are close to uh, saturating the disk. <coughs> and um, so, so the other thing is yesterday we were talking about performance testing and when we plan this kind of performance regression test it, it would be probably good to <coughs> separate out tests in these two classes. One is where you have a small number of threads. So if you have regressions that introduce latency into the IO path, right? So you know, you, you would probably see a drop in the in the red and the blue graphs there, right? But at the same time, uh, you may not see any change in the yellow and the blue uh, green bars because even if there's an increase in latency, there are enough number of requests up, up there that, you know, that latency can be hidden, right? Um, so, you know, it would be good to have a performance regression test that uses just a small number of threads. And on the other side, uh, you can introduce things like lock contention and you know uh, those kinds of issues, which might not show up when you have a small number of threads pumping in IOs, but they might show up um, when you have when you're trying to really push the system hard. And um, so, in, in 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 regressions of that sort, you would see the green and the yellow bars probably coming down. So that, 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 that would be my suggestion as we, as we uh, think about that. And I think uh, the same applies to some of the internal uh, QE performance regression tests that we do downstream. I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to push this there as well. Um, you see a similar uh, result when you use dispersed volumes as well. So here you have 12 cross <coughs> 4 plus 2. Uh, so in this case, actually, you see a bigger gap between the results for the 4-thread case and the 48-thread case than you saw earlier. A uh, few reasons for that, I think, uh, one is that, you know, since there are 12 sub-volumes here and you have only 4 threads, so you have only basically 4 uh, sub-volumes active at any time, so the number of disks that are involved in this test is smaller, so, you know, you, you, you see a, lesser, a smaller number there. That's one factor. The other is, you know, EC has higher latency in the I/O path compared to probably compared to uh, distributed replicated. So that's another factor. That I think also on the on the sequential write, <coughs> I think EC serializes um, writes onto a single file, right? So um, you so that would again increase the latency uh, that you see on the write part. So I think compared to earlier, you you can see that clearly on the um, sequential write test, the red and the blue bars are much below the uh, um, yellow and the green, right? So at this point, you know, for uh, the high, when you have a high number of threads pumping in I.O., we are pretty, we are doing pretty well here. Um, and most of the, those issues that keep you from hitting uh, hardware speed have been resolved as one that I know that is that shows up primarily with EC that has got to do with e uh, thread and uh, how the handler for that interacts so that that will in, in certain EC configurations you'll see that you are not able to pump IOs to uh, saturate the hardware right so that's something that Raghavendra is working on we are pretty sure that we have the root cause for that but the fix is still pending there right? So if you, if you compare the, the volume types, um, you can see that uh, the blue is distributed replicated. So in this case, both are, both are six servers, uh, three cross two and 12 plus, 12 cross four plus two. Um, you know, for the reasons I said earlier, distributed replicated outperforms erasure coded or with, when you have a small number of threads. But then um, distributed disperse really does well when you have, um, you know, a large number of uh, threads on, on the right case, right? So it, it significantly outperforms distributed replicated. Uh, on, the, on the read with 48 threads, I'm still seeing distributed replicated doing uh, about 10% better. And, you know, this problem that I talked about earlier, I'll take another look at it when that is resolved and see uh, where we stand. I don't have a 
good answer for why, why that drop is there at this point. Um, so yesterday we also talked a lot about, you know, latency in cluster and, you know, so the question is how bad are we doing compared to something else, right? And, you know, obviously if you compare to a local file system, we are going to have a big gap because that's, that's not a fair comparison. So, so this is an attempt to look at something similar, a distributed file system where we are comparing cluster to kernel NFS, right? So in this case, there's one server. Uh, in the cluster case, that brick, that f uh, that file system is exported as a cluster brick, as a single brick cluster volume. Uh, in the kernel NFS, it's just exported by, by a kernel NFS. Um, again, you see that for the single threaded case, you s you see kernel NFS doing a l doing somewhat better on writes, quite a bit better on writes. But as you increase the number of uh, threads, cluster is doing pretty well. Uh, so this one is interesting. Um, same test for, for sequential read. Um, so if you look at, well, 4 and 16 are, are you know, okay, for kernel NFS does a little better for 4, cluster does a little better for 16. But for the um, one case, so this is one IO zone thread writing to one file um, sequential IO. Uh, two things. One is that there's a big gap between cluster and kernel NFS, right? Um, and the other thing is it, it, it uh, exposes a flaw in my reasoning earlier that, you know, the single threaded tests are a good uh, measure for latency because what kernel NFS is, is probably doing here is it's able to mask that latency by doing read ahead intelligently, right? So it's, it's doing read ahead intelligently and so well that the best sequential read performance is for that case, right? So even though there's only one thread, it's able to do the read ahead and fetch the data ahead of time so that it's basically able to max out your um, get to network speed. And we are doing significantly worse. Uh, so what that tells me is that we do need to look at maybe improving our uh, read ahead. Uh, yeah, so there is a uh, uh, existing bug which uh, basically disables read ahead actually. Uh, you might be aware of that when open behind is on, uh, the read ahead is basically turned off which means that the cluster FS client doesn't have a read ahead caching. So uh, that might be the reason. And there's also another related bug uh, where uh, uh, multi-threaded uh, reading basically uh, kind of turns off uh, read ahead also because like uh, the cluster uh, uh, read ahead uh, translators would see the converged reads as something like a random IO. Even though right. each so, so just one thing to explain here uh, on these tests. When you say, when I say 16 IO zone threads, right? So each thread is writing to its own <coughs> file, right? So, so you don't have two threads accessing the same file. So, it's okay. 16 threads means six, there are 16 files, mm -hmm. and each is writing <coughs> sequentially within that file. Uh, so that problem, uh, the second problem that you said it's should not show up here, but um, yeah, we, we, we should uh, definitely take a look and see if we can close that gap there. Okay, so uh, <coughs> just repeating this test with, with a random read workload, um, just because of this problem that I said, the sequential reads are not a good test for latency. Well, they are, but you know, not they don't, quite give you what you want because the latency can be masked. Right? Uh, so here again, uh, a random read test with 1, 4, 16 uh, threads. In this case, the, the benchmark I'm using is FIO. Uh, in the one case, it's just one instance of FIO. Otherwise, it's that many number divided across four clients. So again, uh, you don't see much of a difference here because for this particular workload, what we're doing here is in the default case, all these tests measure from the platter to the you know application right so it's going all the way down to the disk getting the data moving into the application so and and the latency of the disk io is so high that you don't really see um, the the latency in the software layers very prominently here because that that dominates everything else so the last graph that you have there is um, and the way we do, we do make sure it goes to the platter is by, may, by dropping the caches before um, the read test. And things. So in the, in the last case, the caches have been dropped on the client side, but not on the server. So in, in, bo in both cluster and kernel <coughs> NFS are going all the way down to the page cache, to the server side page cache, and then 
coming back up, right? So it's mostly the latency of the uh, of the software layers there, right? So in there, in that case, you do see a difference between uh, kernel NFS and cluster, and you see that you know the the effect of the that probably tells us that you know we have a higher latency path compared to the other. One. <coughs> Uh, these random write tests, I think I need to redo them. They turned out to be not too interesting, and mostly because um, in these cases I'm using a RAID 6 brick, and uh, you know when you have random writes, RAID 6 does pretty bad because of the small write for partial stripe write problem, and so the the numbers are all pretty much you know even you you saturate the disk very quickly in these cases, but um, yeah, nothing remarkable there. So this is a comparison of, again, back to uh, moving away from the um, single server kernel NFS uh, versus uh, cluster to replica versus uh, disperse within cluster with six servers. Um, you do see that uh, for the random read case, uh, distributed replicated volume uh, gives you a better performance here. But again, because of the problem that I was talking about earlier, RAID 6 performance with um, random writes. So the replica, uh, distributed replica volume is using a RAID 6 brick, whereas in the other case, it's uh, non-raided single uh, drive, bricks on a single drive. So in this case, actually, distributed disperse is outperforming um, you know, the replica on, on random writes. OK. Um, small file reads. So um, you see in this case that the EC is at, at significantly lower in performance compared to um, you know the, the replica volume, and part of this is because of so after these slides were done, I, I did some more experiments, and if you if you turn on if you turn off um, eager locking, yeah. disperse eager locking. You close the gap a little bit. Um, you but but so so on the on the 32 uh, bar, right? So I instead of being less than 100, you come up to about 200 with uh, the EC volume, right? So but there's still a gap between um, you know distributed, replicated, and uh, dispersed. So that helps. But again, you know that that's so. The other thing here is. If I keep increasing the number of threads, so at this point, in, in none of these tests, we have hit disk saturation right? or, or network saturation. So there is more performance to be had here. Uh, but again, because of the latency, you are, you are limited with what you get. So if I go to 64 threads, 128 threads, that, that blue bar keeps going up. Uh, at 128 threads, it's close to saturation. So that basically hints at a lot of latency um, and other people have looked at it yesterday from other points of view. You know, I'm actually measuring the latency. But uh, these, the, what I like about these tests is, you know, they are a good approximation for the latency you have in your in your I/O path with a very simple test. You don't have to collect, you know, uh, a lot. It's just a throughput test, but at the same time, it gives you quite a bit of information about the latency that is there in your I/O path. Um, right. So this is. Uh, okay, so, and again on the create side, um, similarly, uh, replica volume is outperforming distributed disperse, <coughs> but uh, I do think there's something going on here that we need to take a look at. The, the numbers don't scale up. I mean, I don't see any hardware saturation, but at the same time, you know, the create performance doesn't really keep going up like I would expect. It to. So there, there might be something else at work here. Uh, small file performance in general is an area under investigation. We have one is one known issue. Maybe somebody in this room raised it, where as you increase the number of files, um, there is a marked degradation in performance. And uh, Pranit worked on it with me for a while, and we have not quite. Um, uh, reached root cause there. It seems to me that this is some seek related issue because of the dot .glustrfs directory that is there and um, you know the, the, the uh, XFS seems to do, be doing additional seeks. I, I don't see that so much if I run this on an SSD uh, brick. So, so because of that issue some of these stats that I get out of these runs are a little hard to analyze at this point so we'll probably need some more time to 
you know, look at the small file performance uh, more clearly. Um, so we do see a lot of interest in Rayesha coding. Um, so this graph up here is uh, surveillance cameras writing to a Gluster backend through recording servers, that kind of a workload. And basically as you increase the number of cameras, you have the, the, the throughput that is being requested of the Gluster volume will increase. And this test is basically measuring can the Gluster volume keep up or not, right? So uh, as long as you are on the 45 degree line, that means you are meeting whatever is being requested of you. But once you hit that knee, that means you are not able to keep <coughs> up, right? So you can see here uh, why uh, erasure coding is a good uh, solution for this particular case. Uh, you see significantly better performance for this right dominator workload. Uh, so you are not only um, providing good performance, but at a much lower cost. Right? So uh, this is this is a right dominator workload. You see, you know, IPTV read dominated. Uh, the general parameters for these uh, cases, for these um, opportunities, right? Um, people are interested in fairly large scale, uh, pera tens of petabytes eventually. Uh, so they might start with less than a petabyte and then they plan to grow. So things like rebalance is important for them, right? So you, you need to um, pay attention to that. Um, you might, when you're operating at that scale, you will probably hit failures very quite frequently. So things like multi-threaded self-heal. Uh, for EC and again rebalance performance for EC. Uh, so currently I'm trying to focus on making sure that all the pieces that are needed for a case or for, a, for, an, for opportunities like this are in good shape. So, right, so EC rebalance performance with EC um, and you know the IO path all of those um, are working well together so that we can go after these kind of uh, opportunities. Okay, um, just to close out, some of the things that uh, we are working on. Um, we moved to multi-threaded uh, migrations in rebalance about a year ago, and we took a look at this recently, and s we saw that there are uh, improvements to be made in all of these aspects in the crawl, uh, the speed at which you crawl, the speed with which you do migrations. Ideally, in the aggressive mode, we would like to be able to completely saturate the network, uh, right? So push as much <coughs> data as possible. Uh, I don't see that happening. So um, all of those things, you know, probably need to be looked at. Uh, small file performance I talked about. Uh, tiering for a particular combination, uh, when I looked at it last, um, it was not doing very well. So if you wanted tiering, you could, you know, there are multiple solutions out there. For instance, you could use what is called as DM cache or LBM cache to do tiering at the brick level. Mm -hmm. Where that doesn't help is if you want to mask some of the EC performance problems with small files, right? So for that, you would need to use tiering at the cluster level. Right? So, so this particular case, EC cold tier and small file workload, that's an important use case for cluster tiering. And you know, I, I think it's important that cluster tiering should perform well for that. And the last time I looked, it was not doing so well. But uh, there are some updates from Dan yesterday. And uh, so, so if we you might. Turn on, if you turn on MD cache, yeah. one, number two, set the timeout to as large as it can be, I believe 10 minutes. And number three, which I just learned recently, is uh, there's a limit to the inode cache on the server, how big it can be, which if you exceed that limit, it will uh, no longer, it will send forgets to the clients, apparently. Uh, so those, hopefully those three parameters will completely solve this problem. Yeah, it's been a few months since I looked at that, but um, maybe it's time to take another look at it. Okay. Um, so that's all I had. All right, questions? Yeah? Okay, thank you. So I think I'm going to continue to set up coffee break, and we'll continue on with the schedule like we were supposed to, so, um, yeah, well, no, I mean, like, the, you know, there's no reason we have to come back and like, harass all of them, so we'll do, like, our, our last session, and um, we'll do coffee. And the bird is other thing and all of that, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
<laughs> Do I get something for that? Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll buy you a ticket. <laughs> Agree to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. You got this. You're right. That's the last one. Never mind. Hold on. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Which one is your slides? Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah. Can we click on here? This is the right one. Yep. Yep. You have 25 minutes. I will give still. <coughs> yeah, yeah, you can wait for a second. I will give you a warning in five minutes. Yep. Okay, and I'll be holding the sign. I think I'm fairly short. I only need to. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes, there's a people. Mm. I will set it up. One sec. Okay. So use this to point. Uh, this one? Yeah, to point. And this is for front and back, yeah. right? Yes. Okay. And this is the mic that goes to the camera. Okay. Okay. So and okay. that's the mic that is going to the speakers. Okay. Okay. So I should be somewhere here. So don't touch that. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't don't do this. Okay. If you're touching this, touch here. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Well, have a good job.